Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. In the continuing in the spirit of Christmas, I want I, to make this old-fashioned style ornament, but with a modification. This one is hollowed out so that I can put candy, which you know I always enjoy candy, and it kind of has the style of an old-fashioned ornament. Uh, but instead of painting the top, I decided to do 3D print the top and a base for it to sit on. Some people may regard that as out of the bounds, but I regard it as the equivalent to paint. So let's go ahead and make this ornament candy container. Previously, I roughed this walnut branch down to a cylinder and cut a tenon on one end in case I need to mount to a chuck. Now I need the two multiplications to specify an octagon. My sphere is inscribed to the sides of the octagon. One measure gives the size of an octagon side, given the diameter of the cylinder. The second measure gives the length from the corner of the cylinder to the nearest corner of the octagon. The wood is a convenient notepad. Then trim the end of the cylinder square. I cannot measure without a good corner. With a good corner, I can lay out key points on the side of the cylinder for corners of the octagon. Then mark the size of the octagon side on the live center end of the cylinder. The other end of the octagon is buried in the wood. This time, I will not waste all that wood away. Instead, I start with a bedan to cut just outside the end mark. My bedan does not cut a str straight deep groove very well. Needs better sharpening. But instead, I switch to a skew and parting tool to widen deepen and refine the cut. My target diameter is the size of the octagon's side. With corners defined, I can cut off the corners to form the octagon. On the live center end, this is from the mark on the side of the cylinder to the mark on the top of the cylinder. On the drive end, this is from the corner mark on the side of the cylinder to the corner of my cut. These are equivalent. After, I can reduce the diameter between the waist on the drive side, then with a pencil divide the visible sides in half and have again. This marks the corners that need now to be cut to form a decahexagon, or hexadecagon. My sphere should touch these sides at a tangent. Immediately, I go on to round off the corners more to find the sphere hiding inside. Remember the cylinder end at the drive sender? Why not use it for a cup chuck? All that I have to do is to whittle it down a little and cut a hollow for my sphere. For the other end at the live center, I have put a bored out rubber stopper to provide pressure without a point digging in. So now I start the refining process. To start, the sphere is rotated 90 degrees so that the old equator is now running north and south. I did not trim back the nubs because I can do that now very easily with a shear cut with my bowl gouge. After the sphere at the setting is somewhat refined, I rotate it again. This time, apparently, I overcut one of the ends and I wound up rotating and refining six or seven times after having switched to a skew as a scraper. No matter how rough I start, additional rotations gradually refine the sphere. Then do the same thing with sandpaper from 80 grit to final grit.
Enough with the sphere process. It is handy to use for a variety of projects. Now I want to move on to upscale this project. I'm mounting my sphere into my donut chuck. I have modified this chuck to have a replaceable cup center that helps a sphere center and stay centered. The top ring holds everything together. I start by creating a small hollow with the spindle gouge, then switch to a 3 8 inch handheld drill to drill a starter hole. Now with a couple of box scrapers and a round nose scraper, I hollow the sphere. My opening does not have to be tiny, so accessing the interior is not that difficult. What is difficult is this hard, dry walnut and my fear of blowing out the backside. I have to stop regularly to clear shavings and to measure the remaining wall thickness. I'll save you from more of the hollowing process as there is little more to see. Then sand the interior and apply shellac. With that done, I reposition the sphere in the donut chuck to drill a very shallow mortise at the top. This will be the old-fashioned nub at the top of the ornament. In the old-fashioned glass ornaments, this probably was the entry point in the glass blowing process. I take a few moments to sand around the opening and any rough spots. The pad on the drawbar works great. Otherwise, I would have to use the drill press. Next, I want to repurpose the cup chuck yet again. There is enough wood left to turn that top nub for the ornament. At one end, it has to fit the hole I drill and drilled in the top of the sphere. The other end will fit a decorative element that I will 3D print. This ornament is a bit larger than I like for shellac, but I will use shellac anyway since it is fast drying and blends easily. Buffing makes the sphere shine. Then go design and print a decorative hanger and stand. I regard these printed elements as my equivalent to paint or texture. They are not turned, yet they provide a nice decorative lift to the project. Epoxy holds it all together. My ornament candy container will provide tasty treats during the holiday season. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends about my videos. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I add a new wood turning video to my website. Please always wear your full face shield anytime that lathe is running. I harp on this because a face shield saved my life.